some people have talked about Dr. King's Northern strategy as a failure. Um, and in fact, some say he failed in Albany as well. Um, what's your take on that? You were in both Albany and you were in um, Chicago when Dr. King. How would you, you know, assess? Very, very shrewd question. Albany, uh, I think now is widely recognized as where Dr. King and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference learned what they needed to learn in order to be successful in Birmingham a year later. And I'd even go farther than that and say that the uh, northern delegation of ministers, priests, and rabbis, and lay people that I was part of uh, showed the ability of the southern movement to reach out for help. And it got you part of the way to the march on Washington. And it got a lot of the way to uh, the march from uh, Selma to Montgomery that you could, you could put out a call mm -hmm. and uh, people from all over would come. Um, so um, Albany didn't change very much in the short term, but um, it changed a lot in the long term. Um, Charles Sherrard stayed there and made a living and a life. And um, now Chicago uh, probably, uh, It is frequently uh, understood that uh, in the struggle between Mayor Daley and Dr. King, um, Mayor Daley won. Um, and you can give evidence to that effect. And unfortunately, that's the way people have understood the uh, um, perhaps uh, unfortunate subtitle of my book, uh, Confronting the Color Line, uh, the uh, failure of the civil rights movement in Chicago. But if people would read the book, they would discover, <laughs> yeah, Daly had something to do with that. Yeah, King had something to do with it. Uh, his and the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, part of it was they had no idea what they were getting into when they came to Chicago. Uh, simply the scale of it, you can't organize Chicago with a mass meeting. <laughs> uh, and I mean, King was very disappointed that he did not get the support of uh, his classmates from Morehouse, uh, who were pastors in Chicago. They couldn't afford to. Uh, if you uh, went up against the Daily Machine and you were a pastor of a church, the next week your church would get building inspectors that would lay several hundred thousand dollars worth of necessary uh, repairs on you. Mm -hmm. Or the most famous example was um, there was a minister who was uh, building a church uh, just a block from the St. James Methodist that I talked about earlier. Uh, and he got the basement uh, and the steel frame in. And he went back to the bank to borrow the second part of the money to uh, complete the church. And he was told to his face he wasn't going to get the money because he had supported Dr. King. That's the power that the Daily Machine had. And that church stood there unfinished for five or more years until Jesse Jackson went to the National Council of Churches and said, look, this was a good guy who uh, suffered and lost a lot for the movement and we can fix that with a little bit of money. And uh, they provided the financing to finish that church. 